Hello friends, I am back with my series of SIP where I invite some impressive people and we learn new things from the impressive stories of that person. In that series today, I am going to invite a very special person. Before I invite him, I would like to say a few things. Legends are different from other success, successful persons in terms of passion, knowledge, behavior, and never give up attitude they have. Uh, they all always ready to disseminate the knowledge, whatever they have, and they want to work for the nation. They share their skills and knowledge and live for the nation. In that series of SIP, this is the 11th series of uh, IPI SIP, and uh, I am very honored and happy, respected, Anil Kumar Chaudhary sir is with me. He has invited my invitation. He is a person with uh, more than 26 years of experience in the heavy engineering and state of the art futuristic technology projects in power distribution, power reforms, quality energy audits, energy efficiency industries, power utilities, social sector. This also includes many pilot projects and sealing up. He is the person who started his career with Micron Limited in June 15, 1996. And uh, he is also a member of Advisory Board Technology Innovation Hub, IIT Roorkee. He is a member of Elevation Committee, NECA. He is a member of BIS Committee for Luminaries, Lamps, and Associated Indian. He is mentor for Innovation Challenges Instinct, Zero Point, IntelliSmart. JV of NIF and EESL. He is the president of uh, Indian Association for Energy Management Professional. Apart from that, he is certified energy auditor, lead qualified auditor, project management certification from PMA India. Apart from that, uh, he has executed many national and international even gag projects for EPC, PMC, consultancy, capacity buildings, reforms in steels, power, utility, and discounts. And presently, he is working as a chief general manager and head, or head operations in EESL. He has been working there as that, on that post since April 2018-2020. A, as a head of entire operation, having roles of leading market transformation while ensuring implementation and maintenance of innovative energy efficiency projects in ESCO and non-ESCO mode nationwide and internationally. Now, without wasting more time, and uh, I want to utilize time to know more about the beautiful journey of respected AK Chaudhry Saab. Welcome, sir. Welcome to my show. And uh, I you, would like to welcome here, and I would like to uh, request you to start a brief story. How did you enter this power sector? Start with your qualification and everything. Mm. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Rajesh Ji, for this uh, nice introduction and warm wel welcome. So I am overwhelmed with all the, this start. Actually, what you are telling that how I entered this uh, power sector and all that, actually, it is a blessings of destiny. I got into IIT Kanpur in 1996 in electrical engineering and, uh, and staying in IIT Kanpur itself is a wonderful experience. And, uh, and uh, this electrical engineering in IIT Kanpur encompasses uh, power distribution, electrical motors, uh, electronics, telecommunication, power electronics, this, uh, digital system, instrumentation, everything. There's a very uh, well-designed course of IIT Kanpur. So we take an electrical engineering is a um, charm in itself. So I was blessed to have that. So, and, um, and then uh, after graduating from there, I entered into Mekon. And Mekon is a, another, it's another blessing actually. So where, where you find that um, various kinds of all engineering excellence and engineering projects are being done. So that is how I entered uh, um, like, uh, this power sector. Okay, yes. and uh, can you tell me something about your experience with your very first job, Macon Limited, and what was your best experience with that company? As I just told that Macon is a um, house of engineering excellence. I, I, and they are executing projects 
uh, of uh, tanki projects in, in various kinds of engineering very heavy, heavy engineering uh, projects for especially in steel industry and also in power uh, power plants and infrastructure also so uh, so it was a privilege for me to learn various kinds of engineering acumen uh, in in mecon limited and uh, in the first project i started in uh, raurkela it was a continuous casting plant in uh, raurkela steel plant so it was a modernization of uh, uh, casting system it was a continuous casting where metal from straight away from a basic oxygen furnace uh, coming to caster and it is being casted into slabs so that was uh, it was being done and it, for, for me it was a very challenging and a nice experience because i was seeing caster for the first time in mcon and it was being implemented there so it was a very and this at and this mcon has in the initial phases of life has given me very very various kinds of first first in the in 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 mcon only uh, i i executed one project that was uh, that was for that uh, uh, gas turbine generator in hpcl in vishakhapatnam so that uh, that gas turbine generator uh, was also one of the very uh, first project for me in the uh, power generation side so these kinds of in initial uh, five six years i i got various kinds of first in okay. uh, in mechanic, so that that's how the journey started basically full of learning and there yeah full of learning okay. and uh, and there i got one uh, inclination also to amalgamate various other kinds of academic qualification also for example let's say if i was doing various kinds of energy oriented activities in energy is involved in various everything whatever you do steel projects or whatever energy is involved in everything so i got inclination in energy efficiency in all the processes so i undertook the examination of energy auditor so okay. um, that's how i became an energy auditor so in the process of my professional journey i got acquiring various kinds of yeah. uh, other professional qualifications academic qualifications okay. also great and now i would like to know about your various role in different committee like advisory board technical innovation members of evaluation committee bis committee member for luminaries and associated product mentor for innovation challenges mm -hmm. interesting to intelli smart what is your role there and how did you get chance to be the part of such committee it's uh, very inspiring i think the people would like to know how did you get chance to be the part of such committees actually when when you go through this professional journey is a net the professional journey more than two decades more than two and a half decades it's a, it's going to be 26 years in june 15 2022 <laughs> uh, in june only it, i will complete my 26 years okay so so when so you keep on meeting uh, doing various projects keep on meeting various kinds of people uh, and there is uh, so and uh, they are uh, they understand what is your strength and what what you can contribute in various kinds of uh, areas so that's how you get into um, Uh, these kinds of uh, these kinds of professional forums a member advisory board of technology innovation have with such uh, is one of the such forum in which various kinds of uh, my uh, iit batchmates and all those who are involved in various kinds of um, various new technologies we are always connected so when this technology innovation hub uh, uh, was formed so um, somehow i got connected with the uh, um, I, In this uh, CEO of uh, uh, this uh, IT innovation hub, and then the, then uh, I was asked to join as an advisory board. So it was a really privilege also and pleasure also because I could contribute there with the new technology and the various kinds of uh, new people who are going to have some startups with the new ideas. Wow. So that is my role there in the technology innovation hub. and then you will be the meeting of uh, nc ha 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 nca this is the national energy conservation awards yeah. so this is the ministry of power government of india national energy conservation award it's given every year and the bureau of energy efficiency is the nodal nodal agency for that so the they form an evaluation committee and since i am energy efficiency services limited es 
so and uh, i'm adding the operations uh, so uh, uh, doing the various projects also so they uh, so i have been adopted as one of the evaluation committee okay. member in the national energy conservation effort that is uh, that is how now, it happened now coming to luminaries and uh, lamps and electricity uh -huh. engineering that is yes, very important yes, yes. because that is very important subject to discuss yes that, that, Mm -hmm. That's a, is a this all the uh, BIS is uh, giving the your ISI mark and all this, and it's an Indian standard. So every uh, appliances, every product has to follow that. So they are forming uh, standards for everything. So luminaires, lamps, and are are not exceptions. So they are also forming uh, uh, standards for this, and they keep on upgrading these standards. So. Uh, being uh, in the uh, efficiency industry and uh, and the lighting lighting is the foremost thing which we are doing and uh, in energy efficiency services limited so um, so i i have been uh, nominated as a member in this committee for this uh, standardization of specification for uh, an upgradation of specification for luminaires lamps and uh, other, uh, these these engineering so i that, would like to uh, share my experience as a technical engineer design engineer still there are lot of work to be done so far that luminaries are concerned because when we ask for the tap test reports for such luminaries we find difficulty many big players in the market they don't have the tap test report available with them to comply with the standards and uh, i think in that direction the work to be done yes 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 so standards are have been already formulated and various kinds of standards are already circulated and uh, and uh, we are still uh, uh, we are upgrading all those things okay. so these are this will also come into force so pre at present the standards are there and as and when uh, uh, gradation will come these will again as soon as they come they will come into force so we keep on upgrading these standards all the time now uh, what is intelli smart this is a new word for me also you are you are working as a mentor Actually, this is a this is a joint venture of uh, niif and esl it is for this uh, um, uh, primarily for the smart metering smart metering and uh, and the implementation of uh, smart metering throughout india okay. so because uh, so india needs uh, the power metering to be done in a smart way and so that the um, the revenue relation through the power uh, of the power consumed uh, is ascertained so that is why this uh, joint venture intel smart has been formed and here uh, we, we conduct uh, innovation challenge uh, named as instinct every year so this this year it, it is being conducted as instinct 2.0 so they we keep on throwing various kinds of challenges uh, uh, in which do enthusiastic people the innovators keep on thinking uh, how to solve those challenges and they they put up their ideas so so we try to understand their ideas and try to mentor them so that they come up with the re really fruitful results for that so in so this is the second version second generation second uh, second second session the first okay. year was there and this is second session. okay so so this this session uh, i have been uh, adopted as a mentor for this so, because um, there is kinds of new innovations are there to for the challenge so that is what it is it means wherever the government feels some innovations things are there they adopt you they request you to be a part of that I yeah, it has become something like this. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. So and now coming to very important role that you are doing presently, you are the president of Indian Association of Energy Management Profession. What are your visions, roles, and activities going through under your leadership? And where do you want to see this platform in the years to come? i to be in the imp indian association of energy management professional is itself is a privilege because it's a very good association with committed and ex experienced and knowledgeable energy professionals it's a very good uh, association and i have been member for this for last 10 years before i uh, in, before coming to delhi when i was in mekon limited i was uh, there also i was member of iemp and uh, and uh, last few years i was a general secretary jharkhand also so i was all the time thinking that uh, how to make this uh, 
आई एम पी थिंक टैंक मीन्स थिंक टैंक मीन्स पॉलिसी सुप्रीम इन पॉलिसी एडवोकेसी सो दैट इज हाउ आई थॉट की वी शुड Uh, I I want to transform this IMP that uh, I, IMP should be uh, having the role in the uh, uh, just pinnacle of nobody if anybody is thinking of policy advocacy I should they should be thinking of IMP so uh, so policy advocacy energy reforms uh, conscience keeper and uh, and the uh, reaching of the last mile. so as to make it uh, sustainable uh, energy is our actually requirement and the sustainability of the same is required if the peop- if uh, it is the po- people's movement so imp should be progressing as uh, to sensitize people for energy and it should become the people's movement and to achieve this goal we need to develop target oriented uh, uh, groups actually some group should be uh, the having we should have for uh, stakeholder uh, and brainstorming with the uh, the stakeholders and there some good should be with the industry academy and inter- the interface so virtual academies already uh, we are placing virtual academies so various kinds of activities are being planned and being uh, been done also so series of panel discussions are being done and outcomes are being published by monthly magazine urja watch is there so so various kinds of innovations are getting published in that mission sustainable india is there virtual academies there so, so things are getting lined up and people are um, now I joining i am quite sure this. under you your leadership that the platform will rise and finally some results will come results have already starting coming out and more results are expected and it will definitely come out uh now time to talk about your experience you have done many national international projects for epc pmc consultancy what do you feel what what was the biggest challenge and what was your experience and how did you overcome the challenges you faced yes it's a very nice uh, uh, journey also and it's a nice professional journey it's very nice experience also because every epc project any uh, any project in itself is a is a new is new in itself so no, no one project is uh, identical to other projects True. so if i will tell you uh, actually the first project uh, yes you're right actually the first project which i started uh, was as i said told you that is rao kela rao kela steel plant is itself is a it has been a so raukela steel plant it was caster continuous caster was there so the molten metal uh, was coming from the basis of basis of steel furnace in 150 tons ladle so it's a really a enormous exercise the cranes of that size are putting it in the turret and then the casting process starts is a very hazardous also and various kinds of safety is required so the steel plants is having these kinds of challenges so it it has been always various uh, various kinds of still skill was involved to manage the entire kinds of engineering with the safety precautions and everything also and then uh, other projects for uh, this uh, power gas turbine uh, generator power plants of spcl then uh, then there was projects for um, power reforms also this uh, apdrp accelerated power development and reform program and this uh, this when this program was uh, launched by government of india so it was a very ambitious it it, it has been very amb- ambitious program of government of india to reduce aggreg- aggregate technical and commercial losses of the power distribution the right. system of india this uh, electricity boards of india so it it has been very ambitious program so we studied uh, the entire india and i was mainly interested uh, interested the task of jharkhand west bengal tamil nadu and rajasthan at that time so i studied these states and uh, uh, entire network and what is the um, what how it can be strengthened how the losses can be reduced how atnc losses can be reduced so this this was a itself uh, very um, has been uh, actually nice experience all together did you get success and in then can the losses of this distribution companies yeah uh, because initially uh, this 
distribution companies were not uh, even aware of what kind of uh, distribution losses they are uh, uh, having. They were always estimating. By this process, they could actually really calculate what kind of uh, estimation. In a, to, the, to the tune of 70% uh, irrigate technical uh, in commercial losses. And now gradually they came to 40% and still in, uh, in various states, we are struggling with 34, 33%, still we are struggling with. So the yeah, journey is still a long way. This is a painful area. Yeah, journey is still long way. Various states have uh, in, uh, in various discoms. This unbundling of power dis uh, distribution, this, this uh, discom, uh, electricity board was also one of the fun part of that. Distribution companies uh, will become one company and the transmission will be another company. So this has happened and distribution companies started concentrating with their own losses. So just they, that's how they have tried to contain their losses. Some distribution companies, let's say Jaipur with the Nigram Limited, and they have tried to contain their losses up to uh, 10 to 15 percent also. And some other uh, in the Mumbai also, in Delhi also. Look, so they, have, they are improving. But still, various kinds of states are there. We are struggling with 30, 34 percent, the painful area, you can, as you have already said. So that is there. Yes, sir. So that's why various kinds of projects are there. Uh, now, I would like to know about your view on the quality energy audit in India. How do you define the quality energy audit in India? And Actually, quality audit is uh, some, something like the for the uh, process standardization. Okay. And the energy audit is, um, uh, is uh, so the both, I, I'm actually, I, just I told you various kinds of uh, qualification I obtained during the, the, my professional period. So that I became quality auditor also in due okay. course of time. And for the Mekon I'll Limited, I was, I was uh, I, I I was a central council member for uh, quality management system in Mekon, so okay. which was responsible for the uh, standardization of processes, and uh, for uh, look for this ISO 9001 and all those things standardization should uh, implementation of all those things uh, was well, to ensure those things uh, was one of my activity uh, besides my various kinds of professional uh, project project roles. So this became my one of the activities. So this and uh, we did some quality uh, this audits and quality uh, implemented quality management systems in various kinds of other steel rerolling mills, uh, which Ministry of uh, Steel uh, uh, asked us UNDP UNDP has asked us to implement uh, quality management system. Notion of their own processes so that whatever they do, they should uh, document that thing only. And whatever they document, they should do that. Okay. Do what you say, say what, uh, say what you do. That, that is the mantra of uh, any quality. Do you feel system. we are on the very right path on so far that energy audit in India is concerned or some work still to be done? Yeah. Yes, yes, for the energy auditor, energy audit actually many things have to be done. Uh, for uh, we are at very preliminary stage of uh, energy auditing because whenever we go for energy audit, there actually it is not uh, still not a very compulsory thing. It is still a um, uh, voluntary sort of, and um, people are getting aware and now we are going into energy audit. So whenever somebody goes for the energy audit. So that requires uh, in the uh, various kinds of measures which can be implemented uh, are there. So some are quick wins, some are medium terms, some are long terms. So we generally uh, keep on concentrating on uh, quick wins only. So our uh, because even quick wins are so many. So while implementing those, uh, we can, we start thinking that we have implemented uh, much much kind of energy uh, efficiency system. So we become very happy in our right. self right. that we have implemented quick wins. But then uh, medium term goal and uh, long term, uh, and that requires various kinds of um, investment uh, also, and the returns, and that is to be calculated very well. And then uh, when they calculate and the, the, uh, the industry which was going to implement this uh, uh, medium term and long term interventions should have faith in the energy auditing system and whatever the outcome because they will be investing and then uh, so that is how the holistic to, view in isolation yeah. we come to energy efficiency at all yes 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 that is why it is required and now 
I am going to ask very important question. Now you are heading, you are working as a chief general manager and head of operations in EESL. What is your role? Yes. What your company is doing? What are your objective? I would like to understand so that the people can also understand what this EESL is doing right now. Uh, just as I told that uh, energy alter, uh, energy alting has uh, gives us three kinds of solutions: quick wins, medium term, and long term. So, and I told that implementing medium term and uh, long term is, uh, and these uh, any kinds of uh, this uh, energy alter solutions is a investment in itself. Energy efficiency services limited comes into picture there only. Okay. So whenever uh, there is a, a then any energy efficiency um, uh, prospect is there, uh, energy saving prospect is there. So energy efficiency service limited is an ESCO company, energy service company. And uh, what this energy service company does that they, it identifies energy saving potential in any process, in any system, and then uh, understands what kind of technology intervention uh, may be done to, um, to make that system uh, energy efficient and that and, and it validates whether it, it is really possible or whatever and then uh, and and then comes with the solution to implement that uh, that um, solution in uh, in that industry and that system social setup whatever so so that that system becomes uh, energy efficient and the entire investment is, is generally done by um, uh, ESCO company, which is ESL there. So ESL does the entire investment and the beneficiary starts saving uh, the energy. And we, pro, uh, we, uh, finance, we, we make a financial model in such a way that through the saving, uh, that beneficiary keep, starts paying ESL. And in the due course of time, that uh, that uh, beneficiary pays the entire amount to ESL with the our with our financial and our project management cost itself. So the entire thing is being paid. So there is no burden to beneficiary, and um, and and he has a confidence of technology also. To make it simple, Hello. let's yes. say I am I belong to a power industry, and if a power industry power utility come out with a plan to improve their efficiency in their substations or offices. In that case, ESL will help. Hmm. If we have some plan yes, for yes, it's a very good... in our company. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that's a very good opportunity for ESL. That uh, if a um, power system, power substation, and uh, there's some energy efficiency options are there. But let's say after energy audit, we come out with that. Uh, uh, that these kinds of conductor transformers and uh, all the associated things are if, if they are replaced so so efficiency of this system will increase three three four percent or whatever percentage and then the investment cost is x and the payback period is 1.5 years let's say we have to calculate this also so in, in a, a esl will be always very interested in investing in such projects hmm. Because once we calculate this, after this energy audit, uh, audit this uh, the wherever this energy audit has been is done, then uh, the that audit gets uh, confused whether we should I should invest this much or not invest this much. So the ESL gives the confidence. Okay, you don't um, invest yourself. We will invest because we know the technology. We will be investing it and we will be doing for you. And then you pay us by the same because we have understood that payback period is 1.5 years. So our financing cost will come. So maybe in two years, uh, all paybacks will be done. So that kind of technology is done. How to and, approach here I will tell you that and how to approach as a utility to ESL for any energy efficiency project that comes in the mind of that utility. How to approach, where to approach. Yeah. The energy of ESL can directly approach to us, and uh, can be uh, can directly approach to ESL, and uh, we uh, we will formulate some study and uh, and uh, for that matter, it, uh, I can be approached, uh, and uh, and and I will tell you the some successful stories that is very important for ESL that uh, this LED lights, which is uh, now. Uh, order of the day people are thinking that is a very normal thing few years back it was not a normal thing 
uh, incandescent lights were there and then comes CFL and then suddenly CFL vanished and LED came. Then it was a time when, it, when ESL understood this technology, validated it and, and uh, make India produce it, it in such a large number that uh, now uh, that uh, that is uh, uh, quality was assured and and this uh, large number of led bulbs were uh, brought into the market at the one time you must have uh, not remembering that um, these uh, bulbs uh, led bulbs were brought through esl only so that was the time when ESL brought this technology. So I now it has become the order of the day. So that that is how we transform the market. And we, we bring down the rates by aggregating the demand. The Indian industry was not initially ready to invest so much in LED light manufacturing. But when ESL came into the picture, they what they did, they gave the assurance to the industry to produce uh, crores of um, the uh, these uh, bulbs. And now the street lights. So, so that is how the street lights have also come. 1.2 crores of street lights have been installed through ESL. So LED street lights market is all, already transformed now. We are now upgrading that market. And uh, motor energy efficient motors have come. So that's also one another interesting story. So great, that, great. now without wasting time and keeping in mind the paucity of time. Now I would like to know about your personal life your social life and your future plan personally? Actually, all this um, personal and professional life is interlinked. Okay. So, um, interlinked. And, and actually, when you live, energy has become this sort of a passion. So, so that is how whenever we talk in our society also, we keep on talking about this energy efficiency scenario. And this is a very thing which touches everybody. So, so, the, so and personally, actually, if I, my fam, if I say my family, my wife is there, my two, two children are there, the one. <laughs> so they're both, and, and, they, and what I find in my children also, they have become very energy conscious also. My <laughs> daughter is, uh, daughter is BTEC in uh, just now completed fourth year BTEC in uh, mechanical engineering from ID Wilkie only just wow. now. Wow. And, uh, right. and, and so, yes, yes, yes. So they, and has got placed also. So, so now I'm finding that she is also very inclined to energy efficiency projects and all those things. So that is how uh, things shape up in the life. And uh, we have been uh, involved in various kinds of uh, various kinds of uh, so social activities, sustainable activities, because energy and everything is uh, requires the sustainable development that aims for the sustainable development. Whenever you are uh, saving energy, you are thinking of saving resources also. So sure. we have been uh, we have been involved through various kinds of spiritual activities and uh, art of living, art of living, and all that. So we have been going to various villages and all those areas for some uh, we have built up some schools for the first generation school goers in uh, Jharkhand. We have, they, those people, parents are not knowing what school is, what's uh, the meaning, what they have never heard, heard the word school with Dyalaya or whatever you call it. They have never heard. They you used to ask what the children will do there, what the work you will get done from the, look, that, that's what they were asking when we were asking. So that kind of thing we, we have done in our life. And now that school is a high school, high school now. And the, the people, the students are so bright that uh, recently one student has secured 100 out of 100 in maths. <laughs> yes. So that kind of- uh, And it, if you can do something for the society, and mm -hmm. desires automatically comes out, you feel happy internally. It gives you kind yes, of satisfaction yes. that you are yes, feeling right now. Yes, yes, yes. That now, is the much I, I finally, I have come to the last question that is a very important question. What is your piece of advice for the youth to grow and glow in the life? Yes, uh, that's a very interesting thing. If you actually, uh, that's all the... Uh, what I have said just now on all these things, it's a it mix in that. See what I have done. It's, I have followed my passion and uh, uh, the passion of uh, resource conservation and all those things and bringing people all together. And 
and uh, that is that is what is required actually i want that everybody should be living in the present do whatever you be in the present uh, the, and whatever activity you are doing if you are uh, in, uh, very interested in singing let's say if you are very interested in making softer you enjoy those things uh, don't think uh, uh, i enjoy this thing but i have to do that thing if you are enjoying your work and let's say if you are doing any work for compulsion also you please enjoy that all, that also great if you will enjoy that work na you will give your best so that is uh, and and if you give that best then uh, and best then then best will automatically come you need not bother about whether best will come or not if you give your best best will automatically come so that happens so if you have to enjoy your passion and whenever you are in doubt one gandhi ji has told one talisman that um, has told that whenever you are in doubt think of somebody who is very deprived very poor then you think whether your act is going to help that person or not so that is how you will find that your act is good or not or whether we should do this act or not and that is the only check and one thing i will tell to all i would like to because i love to love saying this thing that whatever you do whenever whenever you are helpful for other for the society then only the real pleasure comes physical achievement physical attributes are very matlab uh, will give you pleasure for a very short while for a short time once you receive one gold medal also you will be very happy for certain time only not always <laughs> after that it will uh, it will be become, become a piece of soap piece only <laughs> so but if you are working for anything um, for the society and you then uh, it will give you real pleasure and the nature is also like that if you have got any talent it is for others only also only uh, for example if you are a good singer it is it is for others ears others ears only not for your ear <laughs> so any talent you have it is for others so if you have any talent let's say i am passionate about energy if i think that i am then i should be um, able to give, make everybody energy conscious it should i should be able to make it energy uh, movement so that is how everybody should think that is what my take is and uh... with all these words i would like to say thank you once again thank you sir thank you jodi sir thank for you. accepting my invitation and uh, you have expressed your story right from your college days to now as a head of esl you have given what your company is doing you have elaborated everything you have given very good message to youth and uh, i always say legends are different people they never die they are always remember they always live in the hearts of many people and uh, with that word thank you sir and uh, this series will continue and more legends will definitely join in the series to come and thank with that thank you anil kumar chaudhary sir for accepting my invitation once thank again you thank, you, thank you sir thank you pleasure pleasure thank you thank you very much